Alright, so we're going to talk about how to convert from Cartesian coordinates, you know, your normal x and y, to polar coordinates, r, theta. Now this is going to be for two dimensions, obviously there is also for three dimensions, instead of x and y, you have x, y, and z, and instead of r and theta, you have r, theta, and phi. So let's just draw a simple uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So uh, let's draw this over here. So we have... Right, normal xy plane. Right, we have some point here that has coordinates x and y. It's x, it's y. Right, so this is r. So also notice that if you look at it a certain way, you'll notice that this is actually a right angle, and this had, makes an angle with the horizontal axis of theta. So in order to convert from x and y to r and theta, we have uh, we can use actually trigonometry to define or derive some formulas that we can use. So let's do that. So if we think about this triangle, sort of do something like this, right? So let's draw this triangle again, like that. This is theta. This is x. This is y. This is r. Right, we can use trigonometry. So let's do that. So let's use Sokotoa, right? Remember that. Um, so we can um, use the fact that, uh, let me get a different color. We can use the fact that cosine of this angle theta here is going to be equal to the adjacent angle or well, the adjacent side, I should say, which is x in this case, over the hypotenuse r. Right, so it's going to be equal to x over r. Now, um, we could solve for x and multiply both sides by r, and we get the fact that r times cosine theta is equal to x. And then similarly, if we want to represent um, the other leg, is a function of r and theta. We use the fact that the sine of that angle theta is going to be equal to the opposite angle, which is obviously is y, or the opposite side, I should say, over the hypotenuse. So this is going to be, going to be equal to y over r. So then, um, well, again, you know, solving for uh, y, and this is y, not x, r sine theta going to be equal to y. Okay. So if I wanted to solve for the angle theta, we can also use the fact that the tangent, which is the the tangent of this angle, tangent theta, is going to be equal to the the uh, opposite angle over the adjacent. Right, y over x, and then ultimately we can solve for theta um, using the inverse tangent or the arc tangent. Right, you can also write this as like that, but personally I don't like writing it like that. I like writing out the full name because you can. Uh, it's easily to get confused. So the arc tangent of the uh, ratio of the two legs. Right. It's going to be equal to theta. And then ultimately, if we want r, the length of r, or I guess the value of the, the hypotenuse, um, the length of the hypotenuse, we can use, um, make sure you can see that. There we go. Okay. So we can use a Pythagorean theorem, which says that the hypotenuse squared is going to be equal to the square, uh, the sum of the two legs squared. So that's x squared plus y squared. All right? And then ultimately, um, what you'll see in like, for example, like a textbook or something, you'll have r is going to be equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. All right? So this is really easy, and if you're given Cartesian coordinates, you can convert from Cartesian to polar and ultimately from polar to Cartesian. 
um, using these these formulas, right? So that's this one and that one, this one, and this guy right here. All right. So there's four formulas, which I guess if you forgot on an exam or something, you can just easily derive. But I don't know about you, but I hate deriving things on exams. It's just a waste of time. Um, so let's just do an example. Right, let's say that we're given Cartesian coordinates, and we want to find out r and theta, right? So say we're given uh, a point five comma three, right? And we want to find out what r and theta is, right? So we obviously know that this is of the form x y. So then ultimately we know that x is equal to five and y is equal to 3. So we can use our formulas. Uh, we can find that r is going to be equal to the square root of uh, 25 plus 9, which is equal to the square root 34, which is some number. Um, and then for theta, really quickly, again, this should take you less than 60 seconds on an exam. Uh, which is great, obviously, is going to be equal to the arctangent of y over x, right? So in this case, y is 3 over 5 is going to be equal to um, whatever the arctangent of 3 fifths is. Uh, let's see. Uh, arctangent of 3 over 5 is going to be 30. So let's say, let's just say. 31 degrees, right? So then r, comma theta, is going to be equal to square root of 34, comma 31 degrees. Okay. So now let's do the other way. Let's say if we're given r and theta, and we want to convert to x and y. Again, essentially just doing this backwards, kind of. Just apply our formulas in a different way. So, say we're given R as, I don't know, uh, let's use, let's say we're given R as, I don't know, 5, and this is, um, No, not 90. Uh, 60 degrees. Right. So it's 5 comma 60. And obviously, we know that this is going to be equal to, or takes the form, r comma theta. So then that basically tells us that r is equal to 5, theta is equal to 60 degrees. Right, and so then if we want x and y, we know that y is equal to r times the sine of theta, right? And so obviously we know r, we know theta, so then we can just find out y. So then y is equal to 5 times the sine of 60 degrees, right? So do this really quickly. Sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2 times 5. Alright, so this is obviously 5, screw root 3, 2. And then x is going to be equal to 5 times the cosine of 60 degrees. And I don't know my don't know my trig as well as I should. I should know the cosine of 60 off the top of my head, but I don't. So so the cosine of 60 is 1 half times 5, it's just 4 halves, right? So then our answer is going to be equal to uh, 5 halves, comma, 5, square root of 3, over 2. All right, so this basically, all you need to do is apply your formulas uh, to go from Cartesian to polar, or ultimately from polar to Cartesian. 
Um, obviously, this is only in two dimensions. Um, you can apply the same thing to three dimensions, but you have to solve for z, and then you have another. Uh, you have a phi you have to solve for for the uh, the polar coordinate or coordinates, I should say, the system. So thanks for watching, and we will see you all in the next video.